Hello and good morning and welcome to today's webinar, um, the Oliver McGowan Mandatory Training Trials. Okay, before we go any further, I'd like to introduce myself. So my name is Kim Doolan and I work for Pathways Associates and I'm currently involved in the Oliver McGowan Training Trials. Hi, my name is Kieran O'Brien and I work for Pathways Associates as well and I am an autistic person and I've been doing this for a few months now. Uh, my mum, Jane Forrest, does something very similar and I've done bits and bobs with her but working with Pathways is the first time I've been. Um, I've been paid for it and about sharing my experience as an autistic person in a way that, that could be helpful. Okay, thanks Kieran. Right, so I'll share the screen with everybody so we can go through our PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. So, what is the Oliver McGowan Mandatory Training in Learning Disability and Autism? Now, Kieran, do you want to say something about Oliver McGowan? Yeah, for sure. So, Oliver McGowan was... Um a young autistic man a few years back who I think he was epileptic as well. So he had autism and I think he had um, mild learning disabilities and epilepsy. Um, and he was, um, I think he was quite a high achiever. Like he was, a, he was an athlete or something as well. Um, but obviously he required medication and a, a certain amount of care and he was, there was a period when he was sort of in and out of hospital and he wasn't being listened to, basically. There was certain medication that he didn't want to take that and that he shouldn't take because he had a allergic reaction due to his um, physical needs. Um, and, and, and he'd, and he'd, been, he'd expressed that a few times, um, but the doctors didn't really, um, didn't really listen to him. And eventually, um, he had quite a, such a bad reaction to this medication that they were giving him that he, that he died. Um, and obviously, this whole training has been set up, the Oliver McGowan um, mandatory training, just to raise awareness about disabled people being listened to um, and autistic people being listened to. Because what was going on there was that it could have easily been avoided, but it wasn't because um, the healthcare professionals weren't taking him seriously. Uh, they weren't taking his concerns seriously. They kind of just thought they knew best. They were, they were very arrogant, really. And the fact that he was saying he didn't want the medication and they were giving it him anyway. And obviously like the, the detail the, the the details of the story um if you go into them um, are, are worse in the sense of how he was treated but that's the general gist of it and um it's really upsetting because of how arrogant these healthcare professionals were and just in the sense of how it could have been avoided so uh, yeah that's the kind of thing i'm involved in uh, at the moment in sort of um yeah, kind of, yeah. Expressing expressing myself as an autistic person, so that we are listened to. Um, yeah. Thanks, Kieran. And Oliver's mum, Paula McGowan, she's produced a film, hasn't she? A twenty minute film yeah. um, about Oliver's story, and we use that in all of our training. Mm, okay. Yeah. So the Oliver McGowan training was commissioned by Health Education England. Uh, so this training will ensure staff working in health and social care receive learning disability and autism training at, at the right level for their role. They will have a better understanding of people's needs, resulting in better services and improved health and well-being outcomes. Where did it come from? In November uh, 2019, the government, government published right to be heard, the response to the consultation on proposals for introducing mandatory learning disability and autism training for health and social care staff. The response included a commitment to develop a standardised training package. The training will draw on existing best practice 
the expert uh, expertise of autistic people, people with a learning disability and family carers, as well as subject matter experts. There are four training partners delivering across England. So they are the British Institute for Build, uh, Learning Disabilities, uh, BUILD, Gloucestershire Health and Care NHS Foundation Trust, Royal Mencap Society, working with the National Autistic Society, and Pathways Associates Community Interest Company, that's us. The National Development Team for Inclusion are the independent evaluation partners. Trial and evaluation partners are each leading and consortium of diverse groups and networks involving 51 organisations. So there's a lot of people involved in these training trials. So the time scales. Uh, so the project started in November last year. The original contract dates mean that delivery should end at the end of May and the evaluation period in, uh, in September. However, to facilitate some face-to-face -face training, it is likely that the training period will be extended across the summer for all four training partners. So at Pathways, we are working with 13 organisations uh, from health and social care through to self-advocacy groups to family groups, so a wide range of organisations. Mm -hmm. So about the training trial, uh, we started off aiming to train people in Lancashire and South Cumbria. However, so many people were interested that now uh, we offer the training to anyone in the north of England. Uh, we will not train people if they are from one of the other three training trial areas. Running our training. Uh, we have run a training course to support new core trainers for the Oliver McGowan Manager Training. We have even more trainers now. All our training is core delivered. Uh, we will run our training face to face as soon as restrictions allow. Our community has told us to keep running our training because of the issues we face more than ever now. So I think there was some concern um, uh, about the need to run face-to-face -face training and then the pandemic hit, uh, which meant we couldn't do that. Uh, but uh, we made the decision that we wanted to continue and to, uh, uh, we've been running um, our sessions on Zoom, which actually uh, have been uh, really effective. Um, but we do intend as soon as we're allowed to be able to to run it face to face. Um, Kieran, I don't know if you want to say something about your involvement. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's been really, really, um, it's been really great. I think it's something that's been, even though obviously this pandemic has been overall a, a very negative thing, I think something that... Um, I've really cherished and really got a lot from working with Pathways is meeting other autistic people and meeting other disabled people and but particularly autistic people in the sense that a lot of what I'm saying is is also being said by these people and that there's a kind of um, communal uh, feeling and communal sort of um, feeling of frustration at living in a world that where you are different and a world which views you differently and I think working with Pathways is, uh, you, your, your voice and your thoughts have just been prioritised and it's just really um, what's the word? it's really rewarding and it feels really um, kind of um, uh Kind of reaffirming, reaffirming, and I've got the opportunity to sort of talk about a lot of my passions and my interests. That I, um, my my training and education has been in acting, but I'm also I'm also really into poetry. And at one point, we had to sort of do a presentation. And I talked about poetry um, to people, and I think that um, that had quite a, 
positive impact on a lot of people who wouldn't have otherwise been interested and um and yeah uh, and we get paid as well which is which is um really good because we're getting paid for something that is really important to us to talk about us and our lives and something that everybody needs to know about but also a lot of autistic and disabled people sadly are unemployed and do struggle to, to, to get work and so um that's all really good and i'm really happy that i'm involved yeah so you 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 originally uh took uh part in our training the trainers workshop didn't you which yeah. is a five-day workshop and um, and sure. yeah and uh now you're part of our self advocates training partnership yeah i think we have 30 people now people with learning disabilities and autistic people who are part of that training yeah partnership. Yeah, yeah. Taking part in the Oliver McGowan training and other training that we offer at Pathways. Okay. So, co production is really important to us at Pathways. So, our self advocates training partnership meet weekly. Uh, and that's a good opportunity, isn't it, to keep up to date with um, any developments with the Oliver McGowan yeah. training. And we also yeah. use the we to explore training topics and training skills um, so there's some really interesting debates take place at those meetings uh, yeah uh, we also have subgroups to meet and plan each module of the training we share all of the story in all our training to help people understand how to listen to us and support us we have completed films for our training materials, so we'd like to share one with you now. Okay. I was in the GP surgery last the other week with Emma, and there was a, a notice on the wall at the GP surgery, and it said, "Don't mistake." Um, your Google search for seven years at medical college and someone underneath had written and don't mistake your one hour lecture about my impairment for the same knowledge as 45 years of living with it. There was supposed to be a learning disability review with my doctor. I get told, Bradley, you are putting on weight. You need to lose weight. And it were an LD review. How shocking. I know I'm putting on weight, I can see. <laughs> I go every six months for a health check. They send me a letter to remind me, but it's not an easy read. It's like... It's just a normal letter. <laughs> it's okay, I can understand it, but the people who can't read Vicky or understand it, they might, they might want it an easy read to make them feel little pictures of what they know what it's all about, really. Yes, I do have a health passport. <laughs> It's a really good tool for people. Sometimes, like doctors and nurses, might not know that individual, and for them to have that document, it helps them to know who you are. Things that will be really good to know, like so, information about that individual, to help organise that extra support for them, um, and. It helps the doctors, I think, when you go in and things like that. So that's really, really good, that. I don't feel a lot of pain. The quite severe things can happen to me before I know what's going on. And me trying to explain when I see a doctor what I'm feeling is an absolute nightmare. Because I think the communication thing when you see any health professional is a real must. The language that's used by them needs to be unambiguous. Try and encourage the doctor to talk to um, uh, people with learning disabilities rather than the, the support worker. I'm, uh, I'm, here, I'm hearing loads of times that doctors talk to the, uh, to the support workers rather than, uh, rather than people, uh, people with learning disabilities. I get that. I get that impression. It's because it, it, it's because um, doctors think that people with uh, that people with learning disabilities won't, uh, won't, um, won't know what they're what what they're, what they're talking about. 
it feels at the moment that everyone talks about diagnos- diagnostic overshadowing and says it's an issue, but then no one ever actually does, it, does anything about it. Uh, the first time I ever heard that expression, I couldn't quite believe what I was hearing. That that, that, that language had been used to normalise something that is just unacceptable. You have failed to provide the appropriate care because you're so focused on one particular narrative about this person that that's all you can see. Let, let's say I have, I don't know, a cup and you have to fill the cup to get an arson diagnosis. I have overfilled the cup so I have an arson diagnosis. But it could be someone else who has more difficulties than me, but they're just under filling the cup for autism. They're just under 3 ADHD. They're just under far dyslexic tendencies. So, so they have a much many more difficulties than me and they affect their life a lot more but because they just about don't hit the tick box for an individual diagnosis they then don't get the support for that one of the most horrific experiences of this whole process for me was hearing people talk about diagnostic overshadowing as if it was like oh you know that's just one of those things <laughs> you know oh well we can't help it's diagnosed you know it's, no it's not it's people not you know it's not taking care properly it's not giving it's not giving people the opportunity to access the sort of primary and, and preventative health care that many people are accessing all the time. So that's one of 10 films that we've made uh, to support the Oliver McGowan training. Um, alongside our self-advocates and family members. Okay, so just to tell you about our training. So we offer tier one and tier two training. So tier one is understanding my learning disability and understanding my autism. And we started delivering these workshops back in November. Now originally, we used to offer a separate course on understanding my learning disability and understanding my autism. But in mid-January, uh, we reviewed our training and decided to combine the two. So uh, the tier one training is now called understanding my learning disability, understanding my autism and uh, values-based practice. Um, you can see there is just some examples of uh, our flyers. The tier two modules build on knowledge uh, from uh, our tier one training uh, and cover the core capability, uh, the core capabilities uh, framework. The tier two modules started delivery in January. We have trained more than 800 people in tier one and tier two so far. All our training happened on Zoom at the moment. Okay. Uh, So until recently, we've delivered separate tier two modules. So we delivered my right to good physical health, my right to good mental health, my right to a purposeful life, working with families as partners, my right to good relationships, law ethics and values-based practice, my right to be safe, supporting people to be heard. All of the training consists of face-to-face sessions on Zoom and a very short e-learning resource section um, on Moodle. Um, So um, each module lasted for three hours with some additional e-learning. However, This is a a trial and we are concerned about scalability once it's rolled out nationally. So from April this year, we have combined the tier two modules into one workshop. Um, We are reviewing all of our training materials and introducing a new e-learning offer. So you can see there an example of one of our tier two flyers. So, um, we have some figures on numbers of people we've trained, um, figures up to the 29th of March. Um, So, you can see uh, we have trained people from health and social care backgrounds, the voluntary organisations, 
other organisations, uh, di different geographical areas. Um, uh, we've also delivered training to a number of different local universities. So thinking about evaluation, uh, the National Development Team for Inclusion are the evaluation partner for all four training partners. Um, they review all the training materials. Uh, they also look at our pre-training evaluation survey and our post-evaluation survey. As it moves out of the trial phase, the aim is to scale up and transfer the learning and roll it out on a mandatory basis in a large scale way. The project aims to develop a standardised set of training materials and resources which have been evaluated and can be used by individual organisations to train staff. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, so yeah, um, we will continue to offer our training um, over the summer um, uh, and then uh, the evaluation uh, will be summarised uh, in the autumn. Um, so uh, we'll then receive the next stages of the project um, and what will happen long term. Um, if anybody has any questions um, that they would like to ask, um, if you could um, uh, send those to us, we would be happy uh, uh, to respond. Um, so just to say thank you for listening. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh,